Emily? <laughs> All right, we're ready. Hi, Emily. Thank you for joining me today for a quick interview. Uh, I'm super excited to talk to you and learn more about you. I love your designs. I was looking at your website and you have some really cool and different things. So I have a lot of questions for you around that. But the first thing I wanted to ask you was more about something that I'm sure people are interested in is like, what was it like you were born in Alaska? I was, you know, I was not born in Florida, but it was in the back then it was rare for someone to be born in Florida. So it was always like, oh, what's that like? But Alaska is even more rare. So what was that like living and growing up in Alaska? Um, you know, it's, it's probably just like you'd imagine. Um, Anchorage is a pretty big city. So anyone who's come on a cruise up here can tell you it's, it's a really ugly city, but the mountains surrounding it are just beautiful. And it's, you have a lot of peer pressure to go out and enjoy it because there's not a lot of other big city amenities. So yeah, I think just from a young age, being outside in the snow and <laughs> having summers where you can stay up all night because it's light out all the time were pretty, pretty amazing. Um, I know a lot of kids that were born here leave to move out of state because it just doesn't suit them. <laughs> so I've traveled around a lot, but I was come back because it feels like home and all of the idiosyncrasies of Alaskans like how friendly we are and excited when people come to visit us <laughs> uh, something worth having around and my family's here so, yeah that's awesome so I was in Alaska in August so um, next time I visit I'll I'll have another friend there so that's awesome yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, um, Alaskans and artists also, we say like, hey, if you email me in 10 years, if we have not spoken until then, you are welcome to come and stay at our house, a little cook halibut salmon for you, <laughs> give you some moose burgers if you ask for it, or not you, because you're rich. <laughs> some delicious berries and all the good stuff. Awesome. So do you feel like, um, I mean, I don't know how it couldn't, but the influence you have. You said you've traveled though too. So uh, is there influence of Alaska that shows in your work? Yeah, um, yeah, most of my um, artwork is definitely based on landscape and pattern is also something I've been really drawn to. I'm not sure if it's just the, <laughs> the repeating patterns of uh, glaciers and valleys and mountains and like just the minutia of nature that kids are obsessed with has just stuck forever. <laughs> so. Um, anywhere I've, I've traveled and lived, uh, I seek out places that are like Alaska, that are that have empty spaces and wilderness, or plant and animal diversity and things like that. So, yeah, it follows you everywhere you go. <laughs> That's interesting. I know um, when I travel, I try to get kind of like the opposite <laughs> of what I've been used to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I did live in Phoenix while my husband was going to grad school, and that is definitely the farthest away from our home environment that we've lived, and it was pretty amazing um, to realize that if you're used to extremes, like extreme cold or extreme heat, you can probably do well in either one, but uh, if you're an indoor kitty, <laughs> that's also something you can probably do in any of those places. <laughs> True. If you can adapt, you can just adapt anywhere. Um... So let me see, what's your favorite, actually, I was going to say the Phoenix, though, I feel like, and Alaska, they almost, as different as they are, the artwork is almost kind of like a little bit similar. Yeah, I think um, maybe like the limited number of things that will grow in either place is definitely similar. Um, the Desert Botanical Garden in Phoenix was one of my favorite places to go visit. Um, and they have plants from all over the world. So I got to see the plants that I lived with in South Africa when I was an exchange student and <laughs> just stare for hours at all the cacti just all the time, um, which is it was pretty similar to up here in, in a lot of ways. So. Cool, that's neat. Um, yeah, so let's talk about that. What was your um, school experience like? And you said you went to South Africa? Yeah, um, yeah, if anybody doesn't know about it, um, Rotary International, which you may see around your town, <laughs> having sponsored lots of business related programs and also community building, um, has an international youth exchange program. And so they do, a, for usually your junior or senior year of high school, you can go abroad for a whole year um, and you stay with uh, maybe 
three to five families during the year. So um, it's not a one-to-one -one exchange. So you're not just directly swapping with another teenager. You're just going somewhere. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, I, I got picked to go to South Africa. Um, it was not one of my top choices, but <laughs> I really uh, had lucked out with some amazing um, host families. I only had to go to 100 days of school in my whole junior year of high school. So <laughs> the rest of the time was out traveling and seeing big animals and um, like getting to see the whole country. So that was pretty amazing. Um, but yeah, I, uh, from there I decided I wanted to go to medical school. So my uh, undergrad degree is in human physiology, pre-med and chemistry. So I did a lot of training to see what it was like to become a doctor. And every single person that I worked with talked me out of it. <laughs> so I'm not sure if they were responding to something in me because I just they just realized it wasn't going to be a good fit or if I realized it was not going to be a good fit. So um, I have taken that understanding of the human body and uh, environmental physiology, which is all about how we interact with the environment, and um, taken a lot of time in between there and now to go travel and live different places, like Montana and Phoenix, and um, going to like Central and South America, Central America, and um, done a lot of like uh, self-education, I guess, um, online classes, and then a few um, like post-bac classes in art and design, and then um, started working for small businesses. So education's been <laughs> uh, some, some uh, official and lots of unofficial. Awesome. It's never, learning never stops, you know? Yeah. <laughs> um, so during the travel and the different changes in your uh, let's just say coursework <laughs> did you when when did you start picking up like graphic design and art and and you know making that your thing um, i probably started working for my dad on their family farm um after call after and during college and realized hey i can make a flyer that you can read and hey i can make a sign <laughs> using really basic tools like horrible microsoft word posters uh, <laughs> but uh yeah, I, I think uh, maybe it's just something I enjoyed, so I kept doing it and kept finding reasons to do it. Um, and I always made art on the side. So if I had that day, I'd go home and make a whole book of collages or bust out the crazy paints and trash my garage with, <laughs> with old plywood and stuff. Um, and I had a really awesome photography teacher in high school, actually. So <laughs> yes. <laughs> He taught uh, basically the, the basics of graphic design. So the foundations were there, um, and I definitely have taken the slow road. But uh, yeah, I think uh, working for a couple other small businesses, I realized that, hey, this is not something that everyone enjoys or prefers or like is good at doing. So <laughs> it was always something I could kind of take off their plate. And then, um, yeah, I just have been lucky to find clients that would hire me <laughs> as an unexperienced person so that I could build some skills and, and keep growing. Awesome. So your clients, are they like all over the U.S. or mostly in Alaska? Um, mostly in Alaska right now, but yeah, it's lucky to have um, some clients from all the places I've traveled and um, referrals from other other folks too. So those are always welcome. Um, yeah, and I, I really enjoy getting to work with people that I have some kind of connection with. Um, many of your clients are either in agriculture, like farms, or oh man, a beautiful pea farm. Um, up here in, in Wasilla <laughs> and um, in places like that. But I also really enjoy working with people with um, technology or like technical backgrounds, like IT support, because um, I feel like I can translate for them <laughs> sometimes, which is hard. I, I totally understand the, like even having studied physiology, you're learning a new language and it's hard to go backward and <laughs> talk to someone who doesn't know anything about it in a way that makes sense. and. Um, I feel like there's a lot of tricks in graphic design that help too. So it doesn't have to all be translating to, like directly. But, um, it's like giving people the feeling that the visual like look and feel that will help them with their message. So yeah, I, I just I really enjoy working with small businesses because they're all different. Candle maker, herbalist and midwife, like <laughs> coffin maker, uh, IT company. Like those are all they're so interesting and different. I never get bored. Yeah, that's great. And then you also do like fine art, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh. While my uh, husband was in grad school, I got to work at a really awesome makerspace, um, a little bit different than the Creators Lounge. Um, 
um, but similar in that it was just a great group of people. Um, I took one class there and they decided that I should be an instructor on their long arm quilter that's 12 feet long. <laughs> and <laughs> has a very powerful industrial sewing machine attached. Uh, so <laughs> from, yeah, basically from them taking a chance on me teaching, I got to learn how to use all kinds of different equipment and uh, work with a lot of other grad students in their art program at Arizona State. So I purchased a laser when I got home and <laughs> can use all kinds of CNC equipment um, and just have been kind of finding ways to bring them together um, in, in artwork. So it's like making ceramic work by hand and then combining it with something that's laser cut or coming up with some weird formula for <laughs> how, so how a, a book can go together and then like doing the physical action of sewing it in that pattern. So yeah, I just really enjoy like, they call it algorithmic craft, which sounds very technical, but basically just means coming up with a, a protocol for what you're doing that you can repeat or iterate on that will generate new ideas or new like physical uh, objects for you. Cool. That's definitely different. Um, do you also, so on your website, you have a blog and then also um, something called do, do, do. Um, where did I put it? Something called Today Is. Yeah. So are you also a writer? <laughs> no, um, I actually did a, when I moved to Phoenix, I didn't have a job, didn't have a studio, didn't have any friends, and <laughs> needed something to motivate me to keep going um, every day to, you know, just generate new ideas, um, and did a 365-day blog project, so I learned a new, I either make something physical or do a digital art project to build my skills in Illustrator and in design and Photoshop, and then, um, uh, also, sometimes things, you just run out of like, like ideas that day, <laughs> and so I'd use a random word generator to uh, come up with a prompt. So, yeah, a lot like writers would use a prompt and just make random things. So, it's been a surprisingly deep, like, cache of ideas to draw from. <laughs> so, if somebody needs a fancy-looking seal, it's like, hey, I learned how to do that in Illustrator. Let me just grab those files and send them on over. <laughs> yeah, I highly recommend it if someone has, like, a little where they... <laughs> Uh, can dedicate some time to it. Like you said, with your um, in starting your Instagram, I think the, the blogging really, you really just need that concentrated amount of time and the mental space to, to work through it. Right. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Gosh, you're so creative. Um, <laughs> you think all artists are creative, but they're, uh, they're not, they're not all creative. Sometimes it's like a, you know, repeat of the same thing. It's really, it's, it's cool to see, um, you know, but then it depends on what everyone's goals are and whatever. Not yeah. Trying to, no, right I think not being, great, but. <laughs> well, I was say, uh, being exposed to the graduate art program while my husband was in it, I basically took like a vicarious three years to learn as much as I could from all of them. And everybody was making weird stuff every day, <laughs> but they never apologized for it. And sometimes it worked and sometimes it didn't, but it was definitely uh, great to see the professors push the students and um, just get get maybe past where they're eventually gonna be, <laughs> like just get way out there <laughs> and then come back to something that was truly interesting that they could work on as a body of work for many years. So yeah, pretty, pretty inspiring environment for sure. So what's your favorite thing to work with? <laughs> I really don't have one. I think I don't want to put us in the same category, but maybe like you, uh, I think I'll probably always be somebody that will enjoy switching back and forth and going from digital to problem solving for clients to physical artwork. Um, yeah, the ceramic studio is really hard on your body <laughs> and the digital part can be really hard on your brain and your eyes and the, uh, helping businesses with their challenges can be really hard on your little artistic heart. <laughs> so, uh, but they support each other too. So uh, yeah, I, I would hope that maybe I'll end up with like this awesome swirl of all three of them to continue. <laughs> That's great. Um, yes, I do feel like that. It's just, uh, if every day was the same for me, I, I'd be bored to tears. Um, so quarantine, at least the work that I'm doing every day is not the same. The routine of it is a little bit like, but <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, let's see, a few more questions. You have a new baby in your house, so, and you've adopted, which I think is awesome. I don't know what the reason is or if you care to share, but I think that's awesome. I just, I've always, <laughs> even since I was um, in high school, uh, I have a journal entry for one of my classes that I talked about overpopulation and I was never having kids. And um, I was, you know, if I ever wanted them, I would adopt. And I have felt that way ever since. And um, so I think it's a, a noble thing to do. And um, anyway, how's that changed the, your life? How you, how you approach your work? No, um, in every way, I'm sure. And there's some ways I'm sure it's changing me right now that I don't even realize and will look back on. Um, yeah, just, I mean, I'm happy to share. Uh, my husband and I couldn't have kids, so we decided uh, adoption was going to be our best route. Um, and I would totally respect, I have much respect for people with biological kids or stepkids or um, just kids in their life. Yeah, they say that you can be a parent or a parent figure to any child that's in your life. So it doesn't have to be your, your very own. <laughs> but um, yeah, my husband's also the oldest of four adopted kids and they all had kind of major issues. So like physical or like uh, health issues or um, psych issues. So his parents definitely have set a, a role, they're role models as far as like gold star parents. So <laughs> we're hoping to just carry that on to the next generation. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, very, it's very sweet. So yeah, it's been a long road and I definitely advise anybody that's seeking adoption to look into it and it's, you know, connect with people so you have the support you need while you're going through it because it's hard. But um, yeah, I actually did a show a few years ago uh, that was organized by an amazing female artist, and she had us all make a piece about our mother, which, <laughs> if you want to talk about a loaded subject, <laughs> everyone has a story to tell about their mother or the mother figure in their life, so, <laughs> or being a mother to someone else. Um, so yeah, that, uh, I think I'm gonna continue that body of work. Uh, it was kind of like a dead end thing because it was so difficult to like work through. Like, how would you make a photograph, like one, if you could pick one photograph, that encapsulated your relationship with your mom, <laughs> especially coming up to Mother's Day. Oh my gosh, it was challenging. So uh, yeah, I think uh, that body of work will be, uh, it was originally about um, your mom as your mirror, since your parents are the first ones to mirror um, emotions and expressions to you as a baby. <laughs> um, so I think I'm gonna continue working with mirrors because I think that babies are fascinated by them and I enjoy seeing my little girl look at them <laughs> all the time too. That's cool. Sorry, right, continue. Yeah. <laughs> I'm writing that down because that's an interesting thought. Yeah, there's a, I can send a, the quote from the book that I grabbed that idea from. It was not my idea. Someone else very smart thought of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be great. I would like to ponder on that for a little bit. Whether I follow through with it, I don't know, but... <laughs> I took ceramics. I was not good at it. Um, that's a medium I could not tackle <laughs> at all. <laughs> um, let's see. One final question. What do you think is um, a suggestion or something you've been doing to, you know, bring fun or just brevity fun into this quarantine time like what what do you suggest that other people could do i found an old video game that i really liked and i'm not a gaming person like my family plays cards so you can heckle each other in real in real life I mean, there's we just can't do that right now so yeah i thought that it would feel like a total waste of time and i would have the studio guilt that i should be doing something productive but just like a couple minutes of playing a ridiculous video game that's with your spouse or kids or whatever has been really fun. So I'm not sure if maybe if, if you already liked the game, switching it up and going from digital to analog or digital to analog or vice versa would be how I would how to yeah, how to just like mix it up a little bit. <laughs> well that's great. That's almost that's almost like a thing that people wouldn't know about you. So <laughs> similar question <laughs> that you're behind the scenes playing something. No, I'm playing Rayman. So <laughs> That was my next thing was, what game is that? Yeah, yeah, just throw that game. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Awesome. Well, thank you. It was so great to learn a little bit more about you. And I, it's, it's cool that uh, I'm here in Syracuse and you are in Alaska. Yeah. And, um, 
I'll get to meet you next time I go over there. <laughs> We've got a friends in Maine to come visit, so you never know. You know, an RV might show up at your parking lot and just <laughs> say, say hi. <laughs> right. Sounds great. Well, thank you so much. Yeah, thanks again.